Good morning. It's an honor to be here. I grew up 20 seconds uh, from this hotel. I had a rough childhood. I was born in Santa Monica. I grew up in Bel Air. I went to school at uni, uh, and then uh, I went to college at UCLA. So my speech today, it comes from my heart. Uh, I owe my whole intellectual makeup to the schooling that I received in this community. Only on a university campus can a conservative be a rebel. <laughs> and that's because we're in the midst of a modern day Red Scare. And by that I mean, on a university campus, fear of conservative thought has led to loyalty oaths in the form of teachers setting forth in their syllabus and teaching a requirement to conform to the gods of diversity, equity, and inclusion departments. When students are accused of conduct code violations, they must run the gauntlet of a star chamber worse than anything ever experienced by Americans or anybody else. And on university campuses, we have blacklists. And my name was recently added to a blacklist. And if you look down the street, you have Professor James Enstrom, Val Rust, and Professor Grossclose. And just, if you think I'm exaggerating for a minute, take a look at who teaches now at UCLA and who doesn't. Compare these two people. One is a devout communist. The other is a fervent supporter in capitalism. One is accused of no crimes. The other ran for two months when the FBI sought her, was accused of kidnapping and terrorism. And of course, the biggest difference between these two, can you show the next slide? One carries around a little red book, and the other is proud to carry around the art of the deal. And I kid you not, although Ronald Reagan did not renew Angela Davis's contract in 1969, and to this I actually disagree with Ronald Reagan on this because she had a right to teach at UCLA, just like conservatives have a right to teach at UCLA uh, uh, in today's day and age. But now Angela Davis is welcome back at UCLA to teach, and I am not. And so I'm here today, uh, my topic is constrained really to free speech uh, on campus. And those of you like me, I think most of you probably live in the community, uh, you should be angry. Uh, and listen carefully to what I have to say, uh, and then do something. Now what is it, uh, I'll just give you a little bit, bit of background, those of you who don't, don't know me, because maybe you could say, well, Mr. Keith, there's a reason they got rid of you. <laughs> I was the most successful debater in UCLA's history. That's the entire history of the school. I won three national collegiate debate championships for the school. I taught after graduate, I first taught at Harvard Westlake because teaching's always been in my blood. No matter how much money I've made in my life, it matters not compared to the joy I have had in teaching, in being a positive influence in young people's lives. And before I went to law school, I taught at Harvard Westlake, but then it was the Harvard School. As soon as I graduated from law school, uh, I got a job teaching at my law school. And I was lucky enough to run into folks that knew me as a college debater to offer me the opportunity to go back and teach at UCLA. And I did that gratis. I taught there 10 years. I went from one class to two classes to four classes. And don't believe me, do your own research. If I was not the most popular teacher on campus of the entire school, I was one of the most popular teachers on campus. If you look at any metrics used at the school, I come out at the top. So why did they get rid of me? What is it that they fear about me? Here's the nutshell. Number one, right from the beginning, next slide of the syllabus, right from the beginning of my teaching, I renunciate the use of trigger warnings, safe spaces, and the eschewal of microaggressions. I believe these concepts are antithetical to the notion of academic freedom, they infantilize students, and they do not prepare them for the real world, which is not a safe space. And the irony of this is, the unsafest space is actually at universities, because they guarantee you no pro to due process, and they trample all over student and teachers' rights. So if you can look at these two uh, syllabi and compare them, eh, it's very small. 
One is typical of UCLA. This is from Theater 103. And this teacher talks about having no hateful language, unless you use hateful language in good faith. He has to capitalize the use of no, otherwise we would not know we cannot use hateful language. And describing what hateful language is, it's racism, homophobia, or sexism. Now, take a minute. I don't know what that means. Does that mean support for abolition of minimum wage laws? Uh, uh, is that elitism? Is the suggestion that the nation uh, should be proud to protect its borders uh, and not support sanctuary campuses? Uh, is that something that violates um, uh, this teacher's uh, safe space? Is defense of the United States using drone strikes in having a discussion on campus as to why we not, should not divest from America? Is that hateful speech? I don't know, but I think it is, because uh, I know the way it works at the university. Now, if you look at uh, uh, the bottom, that it's my uh, uh, syllabus, you can see there exactly what I said, right for everybody to see. I don't believe in trigger warnings, safe spaces, uh, and you're going to get a microaggression from me. In fact, I spent half my time uh, living in Macau. It's a whole different story. And I might say to a student, uh, Nisong Nali Lai. No, that could be a microaggression. But I don't tend to be a microaggression. It's a way for me actually to introduce the whole concept of microaggressions. And students don't take offense. And I generally do love um, uh, Chinese people and Chinese culture. Uh, so I do use it as a teaching tool, but that would be deemed a microaggression. So that's just at the very beginning. The whole way I teach my class is not in conformity with what they want at the university. But that's not the biggest reason. It's the substance of what I say. And then secondly, I empower students in knowing their rights. And the worst thing is, the whole university campus, the students know if they get in trouble now, who do they go to? Think. And I will fight for you, no cost. I will fight and I will protect your rights. So if the university wants to trample on students' rights in a due process hearing, they know to come to me. So let me, so, so let me give you just some examples now of things that UCLA has done and things that I have said in the context of my classes and also as a, as a private citizen. Uh, where they've trampled on student free speech rights. I mean, I could go on for a whole hour, uh, and we don't have the time today, but you can watch the speech uh, giving uh, at UCLA for the Boone Republicans on Wednesday. That's how I get an hour there. There was a Kanye Western party. Students in a fraternity, those of you who went to college, remember, it's not just reading Hume and Locke, although you can't read these white folks anymore. Uh, it's also having parties. So students uh, in the fraternities got together. They had a Kanye Western party. They had Goldface. This is uh, a, a, a take on the Gold Digger song. Uh, the Kim Kardashian has a relatively large butt, so some of the student had a large butt. Immediately, uh, there was a claim that this was a blackface and this was racist. Before according students due process, the university came down like a ton of bricks uh, with the intent to, suspe to suspend the students. There was no uh, uh, echoing of a basic concept that students have a right to free expression even when it's in this sophomoric type context. There's case law on this that the university knows very well stemming from George Mason. Complete trample of students' rights. David Horowitz, a friend of mine and somebody that I also support. David Horowitz put posters up linking uh, MSA to SJP and to Hamas. The response by Vice Chancellor Kang was to chill any speech at UCLA. You have to read his two-page email missive where he threatens whoever is involved in posters like this, the university will use all lawful resources to go against those who make postings like this. And the completely dishonest use of the law. And this is somebody who has a degree from Harvard. He tries to equate this type of a poster to that which is forbidden as a true threat under a case from the Ninth Circuit uh, uh, called Planned Parenthood. This is when people put up uh, uh, wanted posters on websites trying to get people from abortion clinics. He was trying to compare that to David Horowitz posters. Complete intellectual dishonesty, but students who read these interim emails, they are not able to vet what the law allows and doesn't allow. They don't know that the law doesn't uh, uh, allow for hate speech or offensive speech or racist speech. 
So in the context, unfortunately for UCLA, because when I teach entertainment law or I teach abortion, gun control, the death penalty, generally I can't talk about this. But unfortunately for them, I was able to get approved before they knew the devil that I am, a conservative. In 2011, I was able to get approved a class called Race, Sex, and Politics, Free Speech on Campus. So I was able, when teaching this class, to discuss these concepts. Worst thing that ever happened for them. So that, and that's how these topics came up. That's really why they want to get rid of me. I only have five minutes. Let me go fast how they denied me due process. I mean, this is just shocking. They had a perfect storm. Hillary Clinton, a uh, 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 Hillary Clinton supporter, with a third, this person has a third grade background. She got in on one of these uh, uh, deals that UCLA does. They wanted her husband, so they took her in. She becomes the chair. She never liked me from the beginning. Um, she's ex uh, far to the left, it, it didn't like my, my positions, for example. I don't believe the statistic one in five women are raped on a campus is accurate. Uh, I discussed that in the context uh, of dealing with sexual assault. When you're talking about Donald Trump making comments that you may think uh, is sexually harassing, I expose to the students, okay, I'll hold you to that. Did Bill Clinton commit any acts of harassment? Students, you would be surprised how unaware of the serial harassment bordering on rape that he committed. And then Hillary Clinton's support of, of, of Bill Clinton? And you're here to tell me that what, what Donald Trump, uh, his comments, that's offensive? These types of comments, she hated. She hated me. So they had a perfect storm. I'm up for a 10-year review of excellence. They have certain criteria. One of the criteria is student evaluations. The students love me. I submit 35 evaluations how great I am. They tell me, whoa, Keith. You're not following the rules. You can't submit the evaluations. We have to submit them, uh, for, we have to get them for you. I'm a lawyer. I read the rules. That's not the rule. Here's the rule. Uh, they do, uh, I try to do an about face on that. Okay, I still give them, but we're gonna, get, what we really meant to say is we just give it less weight. But if you wanna give it full weight, give us names. I give them 10 new names. By the date they're supposed to contact these students, how many do you think they contact? Zero, okay, let's play the game. I go to these 10 students, I have them now, give me letters of recommendation, I submit them. Keith, you're not listening to us. We told you if you submit it this way, they're given less weight. Okay, I do it again. Of the new six, the one that's the best doesn't make it into my file. They ask you at the beginning of the process, list those who are biased against you. I list those who are biased against me. So sure enough, those that are biased against me refuse to recuse themselves. One teacher does an evaluation of you for the review committee. They had 12 folks to choose from to evaluate me. Guess who they chose? Somebody that I said was biased. And how dishonest, and you can read this, this is online. This professor did a two-page review of my class. I tape all my classes for protection. Professor Miller, who was my debate coach 38 years ago, happened to be at that same lecture. His review was honest. But anyway, I took the three-hour lecture and I went over each of his points, point by point. You can say a 48-page response dissecting it. But how intellectually dishonest he was, as an example, I said to somebody in class, I think we were talking about maybe Milo not being uh, allowed to come on campus. I said, oh, now let's hear from the Broome Republican. What you're doing, Professor Fink, is intimidating. You've called out somebody as a Broome Republican, and the way that you interact with students, ah, that's terrifying. Well, that's my teaching style, and I have a Socratic dialogue. And I didn't call him a Broome Republican because I out Broome Republicans. He happened to out himself. And in teaching, you have to have students engage. You have to be entertaining. So the students happened to know from an earlier lecture that he was the Broome Republican. So yes, I could have called him, Mick, I called him a Broome Republican. So in the review, he says, your, your actions are unwelcoming, the student loved me. I only got one minute. How can we fight back? Okay, here's a, a new slide, fight back. Number one, go to the media. Yeah. You can see me on Tucker Carlson. They hated, I taught in the Comm Studies Department, the irony here at the Comm Studies Department, they hated the fact that I used the media. Use the media. Publicity is justly commended as a remedy for social diseases. Sunlight is said to be the best of disinfectants. Brandeis had it right. Two. Students should petition and students should demonstrate peacefully. I have a student petition, students put up in my favor. UCLA is so bad, they hacked the petition to get the numbers down and then they employed a bot when they didn't like comments. 
Three, support foundations like this foundation. Fire is an excellent foundation. And I now, since I don't teach, have my own foundation. I am only here in my foundation to help UCLA students. My heart is with UCLA. My heart is with these kids. I will protect them. The last thing, the most important, if you're a donor, do not donate until all of these fascists are out and they conform to protecting values that we as Americans hold dear, the right to freedom of expression, freedom of assembly, and freedom of petition. Thank you so much for having me.